And one of the theories that I have uh, it, it, for not catching the trends is I do think that uh, retail traders try to be too fundamental. They try to uh, tell you and think that, um, okay, they're going to be smart and they're going to know why the market is going to move up or down. And the fact is, I don't care what you think about the market, uh, whether you think it's going to go up or down. I care what the market thinks. And so as a trader, um, you know, it doesn't matter what the story is, whether the stock's going up, oil's going up, or, or whatever. What you have to think about is uh, what the market pr what the market is telling you uh, the, uh, the, the price is going to do or potentially do. And the only way you can gauge the market bias is through the market price. And so you have this market price, and it's going to tell you whether the market is bullish or bearish if you use the right tools. And we're going to go through uh, those tools a little bit later, what tools you can use in order to, 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 to figure out what the market is actually telling you as far as the bias of the market. But the important thing to realize is that, you know, you don't want to uh, try to um, push or bully the market into doing what you want it to do because it really doesn't matter. The market is much, much bigger than you. And so you have to follow and try to think like the market and be like the market. It's kind of like a caddyshack, be the bull. You know, you have to be the market. You have to think like the market. And the more you can think like the market, the better chance you are going to be successful because the market is going to move the price to the upside or the downside. You just have to follow the clues that the market gives you. Uh, the next uh, theory for not uh, catching trends uh, is this, is that uh, people have a fear of failure. And uh, uh, so, uh, you know, let, let me, uh, you know, give you an example of that. You put a trade on an automatic, you know, to go long the euro, and you automatically think that the price is going to uh, go down, and you wish you were the, the other way. You're fearing failure. You're fear, fearing the fact that you're going to lose money. And so a lot of people cannot stay on trends if they fear failure. They, uh, they, they, they almost reverse it, and then the market goes, you know, the way that they thought. They have to do all this homework as far as doing the plan, and then they have this fear of failure. So they end up uh, getting out of the trade uh, at, a, at a small loss and uh, going the other way, or and, and or, you know, not even putting on a trade. So that's one fear. The other fear that, that I, I think prevents people from uh, trading the trends and catching, uh, staying on the trends is the fear of success. And this is uh, not very, um, uh, people don't realize this uh, fear that they do have. But let me give you an example. When the market uh, is non-trending in a range, um, it'll eventually uh, transition to a trend. And when the market starts to trend, the people are already uh, conditioned to be thinking about the non-trending type market. And so your mind says, okay, the market is going to do what it did yesterday and the day before. You're not anticipating a trend, in other words. Now, um, if you don't anticipate a trend and the market is going sideways and the market starts to go down like it did a few weeks ago when the euro started to go down, uh, you started to buy dips. Um, and, and you may have been short at the top and the market goes down and, and, and it gets to a, a support level uh, from a past price and you sit there and buy against that support level. Well, that's uh, because you fear success. You fear that the market is going to move back to where it did over the last couple of weeks, over the last week or whatever, and move back and, and, it's, and some boogeyman is going to come out and take all your profit away. So you have this fear of being successful, of having great trade location, of being on the trend, when, but you don't even know it's a, a trend. But if you can anticipate the trend, you would, but you have this fear that success is going to uh, be taken away from you. So you club cover your position. And what ultimately happens next? The market continues to trend in the direction let's say, to the downside like the euro did a few weeks ago. And the market trends down. And what happens at the next support level? Well, you just bought about, you know, 50 pips ago, and it comes to the next support level. What is your mind going to tell you to do? It's cheap here. I'm going to buy it. So you buy it at that support level. And the market does indeed go up about 10 or 15 pips, not enough for you to take profit. And then the market quickly reverses and starts to trend down again. And then it gets to the next support level. And what do you do? You sit there and buy that dip again. So you do this about two or three or four times, and eventually the market, market, then you eventually you hit the bid and get out of the mar out of your four lot position instead of a one lot position, and you end up uh, uh, losing a lot of money on that trade. On that trade, it all started with the fear of success at the top, folks. That's where it all started. Uh, you had to, you had a great location. You anticipated, or you were on a trend. You just didn't know it, so you had this fear of success. you got to control that fear of success, and we'll talk about that a little. 
little bit. And the final thing that uh, why people don't catch trends is because you don't anticipate a trend. You need to anticipate a trend in order to catch a trend. If you if you can if you you know have a good idea that the market is going to trend and there are clues that the market gives you, you can anticipate a trend and then all you have to do is get the direction right. And guess what? There are some tools that there are out there that'll teach you or show you uh, which way the direction is going. So that's my theories on not catching trends. Now it's your job to try and catch these trends. So if we have a mission statement, um, we also have have a game plan. And some of you had said that you have goals or you have um, uh, objectives and stuff like that. Maybe that uh, that comes under the, the, what I call the game plan uh, because we have this thing where I'm going to make the most amount of money with the least amount of risk. Well, that doesn't tell me how I'm going to do it. Uh, but what we do know is that people don't do well trading trends. So uh, if you don't do well trading trends, what's your goal? The game plan is to trade the trends. And the other thing that we have to do is we need to, uh, with the least amount of risk. And how do you, um, uh, 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 and, and, and in order to uh, keep the, uh, or the importance of having the least amount of risk, uh, because it keeps your fear to a minimum. And it's my, my under, uh, belief uh, that fear is a trader's worst enemy. If the trend is your friend, the opposite of a trend is your fear. Because fear, as we saw, fear of success, fear of failure, uh, or fear of failure, fear of success, is what causes traders to not stay on the trend. It causes them to get out of the trend. And that is what we have. We have to keep uh, our fear to a minimum so we're able to stay on the trend. So our game plan is to trade the trends and keep fear to a minimum. That's how we're going to do it. Fear is a thief. Um, and so with any game that you do play, excuse me, any game that you do play, there are always rules. And my first rule is uh, what I call the KISS principle. And I think everyone out there knows what the KISS principle. And if I asked you to type it in, you'd all write, keep it simple, stupid. But not in my book. My book says uh, the KISS principle is keep it simple to be successful. And uh, the, the changing of that last word is uh, very important. So what you have to do when, you, when you're, uh, if you want to trade the trends, anticipate the trends, if you want to trade successfully, uh, you have to follow the rule. And the, my rule is a keep it simple to be successful rule. There's no reason to be complicated to trade successfully. You do not have to be complicated. You do not need, need eight, eight, uh, uh, you know, oscillators or eight tools in order to figure out which way the market is going. It, the market is much simpler than that. You also need to think positively, positively. So rule number one in our training is going to be keep it simple to be successful. Uh, the, the, the second rule, uh, we're going to get to these, uh, um, uh, uh, we're going to get to those questions or those uh, questions that you do have back in, in the message board. Uh, we're, don't worry, I'm not going to I'm not going to skip any any uh, any, any st all the stones are going to be overturned here. Uh, the second rule is this: always have a reason. If you don't have a reason to do the trade, then don't do the trade. And we talked about that a little bit in the um, um, uh, in the attributes of successful traders is that if you don't know your risk, don't do the trade. This is the same thing. You have to have a reason to do a trade. Don't just sell the euro at 88 because the market is, is going down as we, as it was when we first started this webinar. Where is it now? 123.27. You didn't have a reason to do a trade. The market was just moving down. Uh, but, and, and so you always have to have a reason to do a trade and you also have to understand your risk in the trade. Okay. Uh, the third, the third rule that we have in uh, uh, in my trading plan is uh, we need tools in the trading toolbox uh, that are do the three things. One, they need to tr uh, define the trends. What is our our game plan to trade the trends? So we need the trend defining tools. Uh, two, we need tools that can help define our risk. Why? If we define our risk, then we can keep fear to a minimum. Uh, if we know what our our risk is and we're comfortable with that risk, then what does that automatically do to our fear? It decreases our fear. Uh, so if we if we are able to define our risk, we're able to keep our risk to a minimum. And the third thing, uh, the tool that we use has to be an unambiguous tool. And what pe uh, people don't often know what un unambiguous tool is um, uh, in uh, Forex training or, or or as far as a technical analysis. And what I define an unambiguous tool is 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 a tool uh, a technical tool that you use that either gives you a bullish or bearish bias. It does not give you uh, an oversold or overbought uh, bias. It just simply gives you, okay, the market is bullish, the market is bearish. And there are a number of different tools out there that do this. Um, and uh, I use three of them. And I suggest that traders only use three tools because too many add confusion. And what does confusion do to your fear? It increases it. 